Hello again mga ka-listeners, uh, we will have to talk also about your aminoglycosides. So what are your aminoglycosides? These are a group of natural and semi-synthetic antibiotics. Actually, they are similar with your tetracyclines because they are what derivatives also with your streptomyces, a gram-positive type of bacteria. As I mentioned, the term uh, streptomyces in your tetracycline ng mga antibiotics. Most of them have potentially serious side effects. Why? It is because that they can damage your ears. They are termed as your what? Autotoxic. Again, once they can damage your ear, they can affect your ear, it is said to be as an autotoxic. Once it could damage your kidney, they are said to be nephrotoxic. Nephro, which means kidney. So toxic to the kidney. Again, they are autotoxic. That can damage your ear, which can mean they can damage your ear. And it is also nephrotoxic because it can also affect or it can damage your kidneys. Actually, preferably, they're given once a day, 30 minutes, take no 30 minutes by slow IV or IM to avoid what? A neuromuscular paralysis. So take note, this is one of the serious side effects of your aminoglycoside. Beside it is autotoxic and nephrotoxic, but it has a serious uh, side effect that is your neuromuscular paralysis. So take note, nurses, 30 minutes by slow IV or IM. So hindi dapat mabilisan ang pagbigay ng aminoglycosides. They should be given less than 7 days or 7 days to avoid what? Nephrotoxicity. Okay, again, nephrotoxicity. It means to say it can damage your kidneys. This is why one of the laboratory examination that we must have to measure, we must be um, mindful that the creatinine should be checked every three days. Why? Bakit ba chinicheck natin yung creatinine? Normally, the creatinine in our body, dapat hindi yan siya tumataas. Because an elevation to that, kapag tumataas yung creatinine natin, it, it means to say, that there, there might be a damage to the, our kidney since as I said that aminoglycoside is nephrotoxic it can damage or it can affect the kidney function so again creatinine must be measured every three days now let's go with us some of the example of your aminoglycoside actually it has a scene mycin m-i-c-i-n mycin now we have your gentamicin with a brand name garamycin actually this is cheapest among the aminoglycoside it is usually the first line among the aminoglycoside against infection actually effective ito siya sa mga gram negative organisms such as your Pseudomonas erogenosa and many other types of microorganisms such as your E. coli and also we have your Cirrhacias, Citrobacter, Proteus, Klebsiella and your Enterococcus those are some of the bacteria each, uh, of which gentamicin shows its effectiveness also they are used for infective endocarditis diseases like plague a very infectious type of bacterial infection caused by your senior pestis we have also your pelvic inflammatory diseases actually your pelvic inflammatory diseases is one of the gynecological condition that can affect also your uh, fallopian that can affect the women's fallopian tube the uterus the ovary so most of those parts are female reproductive organs. So those actually untreated type of STI can lead to pelvic inflammatory diseases. So that is why those STI, patient with STI must be treated so that it will not complicate going to your PID or pelvic inflammatory disease. Actually, your, your gentamicin are, are available in many forms. We have... Um, Ophthalmic, so binibigay din yan siya. So, via drops, ophthalmic drops, uh, topical. No? We can give uh, gentamicin also in an IV form and also in the intratecal form. When we say intratecal, that is within the sp spinal space or, in, or your intraspinal route. Next, we have also your amicacin or amikin in a brand name. Very expensive but most potent and it is less nephrotoxic. It is used also with those patients with multidrug-resistant tuberculosis. Pag sinabi natin multidrug-resistant tuberculosis, 
kasi may, meron kasing mga gamot para sa TB. So kapag yung um, microorganism is very resistant na sa mga gamot na ibinibigay para sa ma, sa may mga sakit na tuberculosis. No, that is what we call multidrug resistant, no? Yung mga gamot na instead na mag-takes effect doon sa mga tuberculosis patient, no, hindi na siya nag nagre-resist na. So that is why kapag may, may mga multidrug resistant na mga um, tuberculosis patient, no, actually binibigay itong amikacin. Okay, again, used for the treatment of multidrug resistant tuberculosis. It is used also for UTI and many other conditions, pneumonia, septicemia, when we say septicemia, infection with the blood, meningitis also, uh, infection with the meninges, peritonitis in your peritoneal cavity. It is also for the short-term treatment of your serious bacterial infection caused by, again, Pseudomonas er uh, species. We have erogenosa. Um, that is why Pseudomonas erogenosa. E. coli, we have also your Acetinobacter species. Okay, your Amikin or Amik casin is available for short term intramuscular it can be given intramuscularly and also via iv for a serious gram and uh, gram negative infection or infection caused by bacteria that are gram negative type again we have your canamycin in the brand name of cantrex actually it is also used for the treatment of mdrtb again but is your mdrtb that is your multi drug resistant tuberculosis and we have your neomycin. Okay, your neomycin, actually in a brand name of mycifradine, actually it's an adjunct therapy, so an, it's an additional therapy in hepatic coma. So what is hepatic coma, by the way? For your information, your hepatic coma, it is actually a, di a disease that affects your liver. Okay, what is the relationship of giving neomycin to the hepatic coma? Actually, in patient with hepatic coma, so actually, yung level ng kanilang ammonia sa blood is masyadong mataas. Paano nangyari yun? There is an increasing level of ammonia among patient with hepatic coma. Normally, in our gut, in our GI tract, especially in, in the parts of our intestine, there are bacteria there that actually synthesizing and they are producing actually an ammonia they produce ammonia because actually when we eat uh, foods rich in protein one of the byproducts actually uh the result ito sa pag uh, actually yung mga products ng protein na kinakain natin ang ibang mga molecule dun is nakakonvert into ammonia because of the help of those bacteria that are living inside in our intestine and because of that physiologic um, activities caused by the some of the ammonia forming na mga bacteria ammonia forming bacteria that is as i again i i i mentioned it is located in your intestine and once that ammonia is for uh, ammonia is formed actually kino convert pa niyan ng liver sa tulong ng ating liver yung ang mga ammonia natin no nako convert siya into urea para ma-excrete siya through urine no from ammonia nagiging urea at na-eliminate siya or na-excrete siya via urine elimination now since i mentioned in hepatic coma masyadong mataas ang ano sabi ko kanina mataas yung level ng ammonia ngayon pag binigyan mo siya ng neomycin ang gagawin ng neomycin is that uh, na inhibit niya yung mga bacteria sa ating intestine na nagkukos kung bakit napo-form yung mga ammonia. Actually, the role of neomycin no, as one of the aminoglycoside is that um, it has been shown to be effective by redu reducing the ammonia-forming bacteria in the intestinal tract. So, yun yung sinasabi ko no nababawasan niya yung mga bacteria na nagpuputos ng ammonia kasi kapag masyadong mataas yung ammonia again it is very um toxic also in our brain so dapat mapipigilan natin yung mga ganyang komplikasyon so again 
sinasabi ko, yung neomycin is binibigay siya sa pasyenteng may hepaticoma. Hepaticoma is also called as your portal systemic encephalopathy. Na encephalopathy. Again, binibigay siya sa mga pasyenteng may hepaticoma para yung mga ammonia forming bacteria doon sa ating intestine is marireduce niya yung pagpuproduce ng mga ammonia para hindi mag elevate masyado yung level ng ammonia sa mga patient na may hepaticoma. Kasi pag masyado mataas yung ammonia, pwede itong makaka-irritate, no? makaka-apekto din ito sa brain ng mga pasyenteng may hepaticoma. So that, that is a function of your neomycin to reduce the ammonia forming bacteria in your in your intestine and also to prevent complication that can affect the brain because uh, again i mentioned that too high level or too uh, too excessive na mga ammonia sa blood can damage actually it can irritate your brain may binibigay din ito sa mga Uh, during pre-operative preparation of the bowel, for example, pag inoperahan yung pasyente, no, that will uh, involve um, operation, surgical operation to your intestinal tract. So, syempre, maraming mga bacteria dyan na pa, baka may possibility na kumalat sa ibang mga parte ng ating mga organ din that can cause infection. So, to prevent that, neomycin, neomycin can also be given no, to as a form of prophylaxis also. And we have your spectinomycin or trubicin used for gonorrhea. So gonorrhea is one of the sexually transmitted infection. We have also your streptomycin. And your streptomycin, actually it is one, uh, one of the aminoglycoside that can be given for pulmonary tuberculosis or your PTB. Actually, binibigay ito siya. Pwede IM siya ibinibigay. Okay, or parenteral route. That is your aminoglycoside. Okay, we must have to be mindful also that there are major toxic effects. As I said, it is autotoxic and nephrotoxic. As you can see the image, we have the kidney and the what ears. So, amikacin, canamycin, tobramycin, and gentamicin. So, that is one of the major side effects of your um, aminoglycoside, autotoxicity, and nephrotoxicity.